There has been a suicide bombing in southern Pakistan, according to AP. In their article, Suicide Blast in Southern Pakistan Kills Three Chinese Driver. It says an explosion ripped through a van inside a university campus in southern Pakistan on Tuesday, killing three Chinese nationals and their Pakistani driver, officials said. A separatist military group claimed the responsibility and said the attack was carried out by a woman suicide bomber. And let's take a look at how people associated with the Western media are presenting this woman suicide bomber. And tell me if you notice a pattern developing here, the same pattern of dehumanizing Russia and Russians and justifying anything at all done to just Russians in general that is horrible and inhumane. Uh, tell me if you don't see the same pattern developing uh, against Chinese people in general. These were teachers and a driver and had nothing to do with anything. And now they're dead because of this terrorist attack. And look at this person here, uh, Taha Sidekui, and he's got a blue check mark, and he's reported for the New York Times, Guardian, Al Jazeera, France 24. Uh, no surprises at all that he's sitting here lionizing this terrorist, this suicide bomber. And he's quoting Malcolm X, and he says, sometimes you have to pick the gun up to put the gun down. Here, uh, he quotes Mao Zedong about uh, how revolution isn't a dinner party. It has to be violent. Right here, Max uh, Sterner. The state calls its own violence law, but what of the individual? Crime. He's, he's trying to lionize a terrorist who killed three teachers and a driver. And uh, he, he'll, he'll stay on Twitter in good standing. This is, this is the trajectory Western civilization is headed. It is not just in regards to Russia. They're doing it against all, all nations and all peoples they have deemed enemy, uh, which includes China. Now, the AP article also tells us a little more about this militant group. It says here, the Baluchistan Liberation Army, a militant group in nearby Baluchistan province, has targeted Chinese nationals in attacks in the past. The group's statement that followed Tuesday's attack identified the bomber as Shari Baluch or Bramish, saying she was the group's first female bomber. The attack marks a new chapter in the history of Baluch resistance, the statement said. Baluchistan has long been the scene of a low-level insurgency by armed Baluch groups, demanding more autonomy and a greater share in the region's natural resources, if not outright independence from Islamabad. And it is a separatist movement. That is all it is. And it is a artificial movement propped up by who? By the United States. And that's not a conspiracy theory. That is documented fact. Now I'm going to show you that documented fact here in a moment, but I want to show you uh, what this most recent bombing is part of. It is part of a pattern of violence targeting Chinese citizens inside Pakistan, and more importantly, Chinese projects that they are working on in cooperation with Pakistan to actually develop Pakistan, and, and especially Baluchistan. There is the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. This is part of China's Belt and Road Initiative, and it terminates Ecuador port in Baluchistan. And everywhere China's Belt and Road Initiative goes, it brings development. And that's what it'll bring the people of Baluchistan. So why are they attacking this project? Why? For what reason? And if they were to get independence, and if you know anything about the, the Baluchistan uh, resistance, they are selfish, short-sighted, and all they do is in fight. And so if they got their own country, they would just spend the rest of time killing each other. And it would be a failed state, and these people would be even worse off than they are now. Uh, these people are trying to stop development in Baluchistan, not fight for it. And so who ultimately would benefit from this movement continuing. These people who are terrible leaders, and they are such bad leaders that the only way that they could continue to exist and have any sort of influence or impact at all geopolitically is if they had very powerful sponsors, which they do. Uh, but let's look at some of the other attacks that have happened recently. This is from the BBC. This is from April 
2021, last year, Pakistan hotel bomb, deadly blast hits luxury venue in Kedah. And uh, it was actually targeting the Chinese ambassador. That was the hotel he was staying at at the time. And he just so happened to not be there at the time of the bombing. He was out uh, somewhere and this bomb went off and just narrowly missed killing the Chinese ambassador. So that, that is a terrorist attack attempting to assassinate the Chinese ambassador. And after that, in July of 2021, there was this. This is from ABC Australia. Pakistan bus blast kills 13, including nine Chinese CPAC workers. That's China-Pakistan Economic Corridor workers. China demands punishment as conflicting reports emerge. And this stretches all the way back to 2011. 2011, the United States openly was supporting separatism in Balochistan. I'm going to show you this article from the Washington Post. Well, it's an opinion piece published by the Washington Post. Why I support Balochistan. Dana Rockabacher, a Republican, represents California's 46th district in the U.S. House. Well, he, he doesn't anymore, but at the time he did. And he says, there has been quite a stir since I introduced a resolution this year calling for recognition of the right to self-determination by the people of Balochistan. I drafted the measure after February 8 hearing by the House Foreign Affairs Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigations that exposed horrific violations of human rights by Pakistan security forces in Balochistan. Balochistan is Pakistan's largest province in area and lies in the south near Iran and Afghanistan. It is replete with natural resources and treated like a colonial possession. By the way, he's saying that it's treated like a colonial possession at the same time U.S. forces are illegally occupying Afghanistan, and also Iraq at the time. Its natural gas, gold, uranium, and copper are exploited for the benefit of the ruling Italy in Islamabad. Meanwhile, the Baluch people remain desperately poor. The province includes the port of Gwadar on the Arabian Sea, which China has been developing and may turn into a naval base. The Baluch have been dispossessed of land and fishing as a result while construction jobs and land grants have gone to Pakistanis from other provinces. He's also complaining about how the Pakistani government was in inhibiting uh, the US military occupation of Afghanistan, how they had to pass through Pakistani territory and how Pakistan was never serious about enabling the US and its, its war of conquest in Afghanistan. And so he says, this is our time to start supporting India more and also Balochistan. And if you look at a map, you will see that Balochistan is uh, on, on the sea. And it, if you separated it from Pakistan and it became essentially a US client state together with occupied Afghanistan, that would have given the US uh, direct access to the sea. It never happened, but that was the plan. And if you're interested in knowing what that uh, resolution was, it's this one. And this is from govtrack.us, expressing the sense of Congress that the people of Balochistan, currently divided between Pakistan, Iran, and Afghanistan, have the right to self-determination and to their own sovereign country, which would just be another pawn of the United States. They would have no such thing as sovereignty. They would just be an avenue for US military logistics uh, while they're usurping the sovereignty of Afghanistan. At the same time, you had articles like this. This is from the National Interest. This was February 2011. Free Balochistan. To counter Islamism in nuclear Pakistan, the US, United States should do more to support Baluch insurgents who, as you can see, are, are just terrorists. They are terrorists. They kill civilians. They carry out uh, suicide bombings. They are just another version of Al-Qaeda, ISIS, uh, the Nazis in Ukraine, uh, the fanatics that are killing people in Myanmar right now. Uh, they're just another extremist group that the U.S. is using to advance its geopolitical objectives. And if you go through this, uh, written by Selig Harrison, who, who has since passed away, but was part of these think tanks, these corporate funded think tanks, he says at the bottom, Pakistan has given, China, this is the bottom line, quite literally, Pakistan has given China a base at Gwadar in the heart of Baluch territory, so an independent Baluchistan would serve U.S. strategic interests 
in addition to the immediate goal of countering Islamist forces. Islamist forces is the pretext blocking China is the actual objective here. And it still is. They're still working on the China-Pakistan economic corridor. The U.S. is still struggling all around the, the globe to confound China and its Belt and Road Initiative. And this is just one of many areas the U.S. is still conducting these sort of clandestine operations, this support of armed extremists to kill Chinese citizens to stop the construction of these projects, and in the process of doing so, dividing and destroying the territory that all of this is being done on. This, the exact same process is happening in Myanmar, and I'm going to mention the Solomon Islands here in just a moment, but it's the same process going on in the Solomon Islands. Now, if you go to the National Endowment for Democracy's official website, this is the most recent listing, Pakistan 2021, published in February 2022. And uh, you go through this list, you're going to notice that there are a lot of programs interfering in Pakistan's internal political affairs. But there are programs targeting specifically Balochistan. So here, health and rural development, Balochistan, promoting a culture of human rights, tolerance and peace in Keda. These are things that the Pakistani government should be doing, but what the NED does is they, they get these local organizations built up and they get the people dependent on their proxies and they undermine the authority of the targeted nation, which in this case is Pakistan. Here's Association for Integrated Development, Baluchistan. The, the word development, very funny since the US is actually blocking development in Baluchistan. Uh, this is just them directly interfering in Pakistan's internal political affairs and empowering select individuals who are going to represent U.S. interests in Balochistan. And one of these people is Mr. Malik Siraj Akbar. Uh, he's an award-winning Pakistani journalist. He risked his life covering enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings, assaults on journalists, and all of this was in Baluchistan. He was a propagandist in Baluchistan selling separatism. That's what he was doing. He was selling separatism and he fled to the US and now he's a fellow at the National Endowment for Democracy. This is his official web webpage on the NED's website. Uh, and you can see articles mentioning him back in 2012. Uh, he's mentioned down here, and they talk about how he was supporting Balochistan nationalists and their struggle. And it, there's a, a Diplomat article right here from 2013 where he's still doing it. Just to give you an idea of uh, who the U.S. is funding through the National Endowment for Democracy and what their objectives are, and it's separatism. Just like in Xinjiang, uh, China's western region of Xinjiang, just like here in Thailand, just like in neighboring Myanmar, just like everywhere the NED goes, they are funding political subversion, political interference, and oftentimes separatism. It's not hard to believe that the US is using extreme measures to stop China. They've been doing this for decades vis-a-vis uh, -vis China and also Russia, the conflict in Ukraine is uh, Russia responding to red lines that the U.S. crossed as part of this process of encircling and containing Russia. And they're doing the exact same thing to China. And we just watched this, this week, the, the last couple of weeks actually, this whole process unfold in regards to the Solomon Islands. And this is an independent article, independent.co.uk. U.S. threatens military action if China sets up Solomon Islands base, would very naturally respond. New security pact allows China to send police and military personnel to Solomon Islands while also opening door for Chinese warships to stop in port. There's nothing in that pact about military bases, but this is the United States thousands of miles away uh, determining what will and will not happen on the Solomon Islands, which is a sovereign nation. And they have been just as involved in separatism in the Solomon Islands as they have been in Balochistan, Pakistan. On the island of Malaita, which is actually the most populous island, so the capital Haniara is on the island of Guadalcanal, is the second most populous 
island, Malaita is being positioned to break away from the Solomon Islands. The U.S. is pumping millions of dollars into Malaita, and the, the protests and the violence that we saw targeting Chinatown uh, in the capital of Haniara was these separatists coming to burn down Chinatown, burn down China's investments, and to fight against the government who decided to switch recognition of Taiwan, Taipei as the government of China to Beijing, which is what everyone else in the world has done. China is the Solomon Islands' largest trading partner. They are also the only hope the Solomon Islands has of actual real development. They have been in all kinds of pacts and deals and receiving all kinds of aid from the United States and Australia for decades, and there is nothing to show for it except uh, this political volatility that the U.S. can use at any time. The Solomon Islands is disobedient, and they're doing the exact same thing in, in Pakistan and the exact same thing in Baluchistan specifically. The U.S. claims that uh, they're interested in, in the future of the people of Baluchistan, but what they're doing is denying them the chance of development by arming and funding and backing and supporting directly and politically and across the media this violent terrorism that is just going to kill people on, on all sides, create instability, and the only thing it'll accomplish is possibly delay or stop the China-Pakistan economic corridor. The people in Balochistan will lose out. The, the people in the rest of Pakistan will lose out. China will lose out. The only people who will benefit is who? The United States. And, and so I just wanted to point this out. This is not just some random bombing. This is part of a pattern of U.S.-backed violence in southern and southwest Pakistan. And the entire point of this is... Uh, this basically a proxy war against China that the U.S. is fighting all around the globe in Pakistan, Myanmar, the Solomon Islands here in Thailand. They're backing anti-Chinese political forces that are trying to worm their way into power here. It is a global project that the U.S. is working on. And if you think, Brian, how could the U.S. be involved in all of these places? Go to the NED's official website and look at the millions and millions of dollars they're pumping into almost every country on Earth. Look at the lists for yourself. We have to keep a close eye on this. Every time you see something coming out of Pakistan like this, now you know the rest of the story. The AAP and the rest of the Western media is not going to give you any of this background information. At best, they will be ambiguous and you, you will just think, well, maybe it's just like that there. And at worst, they will be lionizing terrorists on Twitter. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about uh, subscribing. It's free to do. It helps the channel grow. If you're watching this on YouTube, please check the video description below for other places you can find my work. I'm on Odyssey. I'm on Rumble. I'm also on Telegram. If I am ever deleted by YouTube, you can find and follow my work there. In the video description, I have posted all of these articles that I have referenced. There's a lot of information there. Check that out. And uh, also in the video description are ways you can help support my work. You can do that through Buy Me A Coffee, Patreon, and PayPal. To everyone who has been helping out, whether it's one-time donations, month to month, or even if you're just helping share my work with other people or sending kind words, and news tips, that's all greatly appreciated. I could not do this work without that support. So thank you, and as always, thank you for watching.